from the Tribune News Network. This is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Vows of Assembly was abruptly suspended yesterday morning after House Speaker Halson Mutri criticized the Minutes administration, argued with Yamakra MP Ellsworth Johnson, and pointedly invited Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis to publicly address his claims about the executive branch's disrespectful treatment of Parliament. The episode was the latest extraordinary instance of the Speaker confronting members of the governing party, creating the kind of tension that longtime observers say has scarcely been seen in the modern history history of the House of Assembly. At one point, Speaker Mutri accused the executive of dragging Parliament around like a dinghy boat, and he blamed the challenges he faces on darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places, a reference to scriptures. His 15-minute rant was in response to disturbing issues he said emerged since April 30th, when parliamentarians and parliamentary staff were asked to be tested for COVID-19. He said he was disturbed that the results of those tests were not communicated to him or the parliamentary clerk, who is in quarantine after catching COVID-19. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis said National Security Minister Marvin Dames is obfuscating the truth about the Minnesota administration's election plans. Mr. Dames told reporters on Tuesday that people should not read too deeply into a Royal Bahamas Police Force memo that directs department heads to prepare for the possibility of an early election by sending information about people who will be participating in an advanced poll. Mr. Dames said it is common for law enforcement agencies to prepare earlier than other organizations and suggested the RB BDF action, which was in response to a memo from the Parliamentary Registration Department, was normal for the force. Asked about the RBDF's memo, Acting Parliamentary Commissioner Lavardo Donkinson has said his department is simply being proactive. The long-awaited tax on webshop patrons' winnings has been further delayed by another legal challenge from the domestic gaming industry. It was revealed yesterday. Marlon Johnson, the Ministry of Finance's acting financial secretary, last night confirmed that the levy, which had been set for implementation on January 16th this year, was again on hold, following renewed Supreme Court litigation launched by the webshop industry body. Mr. Johnson said, quote, that is being managed by the Attorney General's office. I don't know the particulars of it, but the Ministry of Finance has been advised that it's on hold until it's resolved. The situation was disclosed in the government's just-released financial snapshot for the first nine months of the 2020-2021 budget year, which revealed that the total taxes generated by gaming in the period were down by almost 50 percent compared to the prior year due to COVID-19 lockdowns and other restrictions that impacted both the hotel casinos as well as those web shops. The Bahamas Air Navigation Services Authority and the United States Federal Aviation Administration signed an historic Air Navigation Services Agreement yesterday, which is expected to bring in around $300 million in fees over the next 10 years. The occasion signifies the Bahamas' ability to have management over the country's airspace and charging fees for airspace users. While giving remarks at the signing, Tourism and Aviation Minister Dionisio de Aguilar called it an historic day. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, Governor Ron DeSantis signed a major rewrite of Florida's election laws today, tightening rules around drop boxes and mail-in voting in the presidential battleground. Critics say the changes will make it harder for voters, particularly the elderly and people of color, to cast ballots. It's the latest victory in a nationwide push by Republicans to restrict access to the polls, which party leaders say is necessary to deter fraud. Several world leaders today praised the U.S.'s move to expand access to COVID-19 vaccines for poor nations by suspending patent protections on the shots. But it wasn't clear if that would actually lead to the measures being lifted and what it would mean if they were. Activists and international institutions cheered, but Big Pharma fired back after the U.S. reversed course Wednesday and called for a waiver of intellectual property protections. If even just one country votes against a waiver at the World Trade Organization, it would be sunk. The Biden administration's move made the U.S. the first country in the developed world with big vaccine manufacturing to publicly support the waiver idea floated by India and South Africa in October. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. High pressure ridging continues to maintain warm conditions around the Bahamas while gradually retracting eastwards ahead of a cold front and its associated prefrontal activity expected by tonight in the extreme northwest Bahamas. Boaters should remain vigilant in the northwest Bahamas due to the possible threat of water spot activity. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny and hot with few light passing showers possible this afternoon, becoming partly cloudy and a bit 
breezy with isolated showers and thunderstorms mainly in the extreme northwest Bahamas tonight. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southerly at 10 to 50 knots but gusty at times in the extreme northwest Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas it'll be mostly sunny and hot with a few light passing showers this afternoon becoming mostly fair and mild with a few stray showers possible tonight. A small craft caution is in effect in the southeast Bahamas. Winds east to southeast at 10 knots or less in the central and southeast Bahamas and 15 to 20 knots with higher gusts in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 3 feet or less in the central Bahamas but 4 to 6 feet in the southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 73. The sun will set this afternoon at 741 and will rise tomorrow morning at 631. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.